Hi, welcome to Spark Stories, a monthly program where we find out about the spark that inspired area leaders to step up and enact change to make Des Moines a better place to live. Today, our guest is Jose Alvarado, a tireless advocate for the Latinx community in Des Moines. He has served as the executive director of the nonprofit organization Latinx Immigrants of Iowa since its founding in 2016, and he has developed several programs and events to support Latinx people. This year, the organization hosted three vaccine clinics in partnership with other agencies, which has helped more than 1,000 people get vaccinated. Today, Jose will share his spark story or what motivated him to get involved and what he reads to stay inspired. Bienvenido, Jose. Muchas, Hola. Hola, muchas gracias. Muchas por... gracias a ver y a la librería por esta gran iniciativa. Muchas gracias por la invitación. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you for agreeing to um, speak in English, which is your second language um, for yep. the interview uh, for our, our English speaking audiences. And um, I really appreciate that. Well, thank you. Can you tell us more about the work you do with Latinx Immigrants of Iowa? Um, as you said, we are a nonprofit organization. Uh, we work with uh, anyone that needs uh, some of the services that we have, like uh, uh, a legal aid or uh, English classes as a second language or, or citizenship classes, or uh, if, if people need help with uh, like a makeup fund, fundraiser, if they uh, need some support from hospital or um, another stuff, you know? And can you tell us how you got started with this organization? What, how it came to be? Um, it, it wasn't like, uh, it, it was an organization in the beginning because I, I used to do another stuff uh, and other events, but sometimes when people were in need, like, uh, like I said, uh, money for a fundraiser or someone that was in the hospital that needs help or, uh, making a, a food uh, event to get money for uh, uh, funeral expenses. Um, I was doing that stuff also, so, but everything started like I just said in 2000, 2016. And then on the on the 17th, there was a big event that was called A Day Without Immigrants. So that got viral, that was, that got viral and uh, there were only four, like five persons that were organizing that event. And that got viral, and we got like a ten thousand people. They were walking on the street because we don't got the per. Because that was too fast, so we had to walk on the streets uh, to the capital. So that was we what we weren't prepared with the speakers of everything. So that that got that got that got that was like a kind of surprise for us, you know, like we never expect so many people on on that day, and that was a lot of changes on the country, you know. And that when when we got more uh, more uh, empowered to work as a, as organization, so we have done um, keep families together, um, lights of uh, liberty, uh, some uh, support to Vanessa Guillen event or for Molly Tibet, or that's a lot of stuff then. Uh, a lot of rallies that we have done, or there was another rally that we did for, um, um, there was um, a, a mother that got killed and their kid too with another person. To, so that was kind of hard. And we got together on that place to make a video. So there's a lot of stuff that we do, you know, but, uh, we are learning on the on the process and trying to help our Latinx community. We don't, as I, as I said to the to the people, we don't get we don't get any pay. That we the pay that we that we get that we got is when when we see results. The people that we can uh, help people to get the legal aid so they can avoid paying three hundred or two hundred dollars that they can use to pay a bill or pay for uh, food or for something else. Or if we are able to to, to help another people with, uh, if they need like um, some support where they need to go depends, because we don't do all the services, but we can uh, recommend, you know? Tell me more about keeping 
keeping families together, that program, what exactly that is? Um, the, are you trying to say about the, uh, that wasn't a program, that was something that go national because the, because the kids were on the, on the border. Okay. So they make like a big, uh, that was viral too with all the, uh, all the people, all the organizations make like a, a date so we can pray, pray and, and, and tell to the government that, 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 that was not okay to treat kids like that. Yeah. When, right, when families were getting separated at the border, yeah. so you were advocating and yeah. hosting protests. Like a, it, we always try to say that it's not a, poli a political issue. It's always a human issue, you know, or human matter or political matter. Uh, what we do, we, we, we always try to tell to the people that it's not a political matter. It's a human matter, even though it looks like but we're trying to do that because we are a nonprofit organization, you know? And Lights of Liberty, you mentioned, was yeah, that a, yeah. another uh, one, uh, yeah. gathering? Yes, that, that was on the Capitol. We tried to do all the events on the Capitol with uh, another agencies, you know? We always like to, to invite another agencies. Uh, so we, as I told you, Wina, we can do this alone. We had to have partners to to achieve the goals, you know. So, Jose, can you share with us your spark story or what inspired you initially to get involved in the community? Uh, sure. Um, what inspired me to do my community, the community work that we do, that's uh, the all the the all, all what, what people is uh, like a looking or, or needing on the community as uh, our, our community is always trying to find out uh, someone the, for a legal assistance or someone or or getting in trouble because they can't speak english or or they don't know like uh, anywhere to go and have the the citizenship classes and uh, our, our organization has a lot of like uh, followers and that's one of the things that we that we use on the on the good way to promote those uh, those services, and that we're working to try to like uh, make a big success, you know. And that's what empower us. As you know, English is not my first language. I had to learn. If I if I learn it, I know my community can do that. You know, they can learn English and and, and have a, a conversation with as we're having it right now, and. It means a lot for me, you know, and I still I need to learn more to get more fluent with the language. I'm not gonna lost my accent to make me unique, you know, because I know it's not like a, how you speak, you know. But I'm trying to to let people know that we are people that want to be here and learn and 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 be uh, empowered and to show to them that we can, that we're a good community. You are an immigrant yourself, and this organization is, is for immigrants. Um, what is the vision you're trying to accomplish? What are, what are you wanting to do for immigrants in Iowa? To empower them, you know, uh, for me, that was like, I never thought that I can speak English because I, I don't care, you know, on the beginning, because I thought that I can do everything like, uh, Oh, I can be with this, uh, with them that speak Spanish mostly the time. So uh, that's one of the things that I learned and, and I know that they can do that, you know? They can uh, get involved with the community and speak the language as a, as a second language, no matter if you don't speak well. Uh, we had the, I had the opportunity to, the Americans to understand when we try and they appreciate that, you know? They appreciate that we're trying to, to learn the language and uh, and pr and try to do everything right, so that one one of the things the organization is trying to do to empower them, so they can be a better citizens with the community. And um, and it's great that you you yourself have felt the the empowerment that comes from learning English, and now you're helping other immigrants to um, get access to ESL classes and citizenship classes. So can you talk about any 
um, books which have inspired you or been influential for you in your journey? I read some some books, you know, like I, I mentioned, uh, Dante, like Inferno. Uh, I'm just trying to keep on that way, not to go, not to make so many scenes <laughs> and not be on, on his view on some of the levels <laughs> because I don't want to <laughs> get in trouble. Uh, I think that's one of the ones that I'm trying to be honest with people and not get in trouble and trying to be the more clear with my work. And I think that will, because all the things that he said that he saw over there, I don't want to be part of that. <laughs> I don't, I mean, so I'm, I'm just trying to achieve the goals, you know, on the most honest way. Oh, so I think my internet might be acting up a little bit. So you broke up there in the last part of talking about Dante's Inferno. Um, it might be best if you just want to say again the description of why you liked that book. Yeah, like I said, um, I like that book because I don't, I know if I don't do everything right, I, I will go to hell, you know. And some of those levels that he mentioned that he saw over there, uh, and I don't want to be there. I, I'm just trying to do, I'm just trying to go straight and uh, and more in the most uh, clear way that people trust our work and our organization and what we're doing. Uh, I would say that about the book, the, they would say, it, uh, I don't want to get in trouble because I don't want to be there. <laughs> it, if, if hell exists, you know, because I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either, but it's a little scary. Right. I haven't actually read Dante's Inferno. Is there anything else you want to share? Um, there is another book, but I would say it, I'm not like a, um, like a, a person that reads too many books, you know, because I'm always I'm always doing something. And um, but I would say that some of the books that I remember as, as called something for Homer, the Iliada. I would say in Spanish, La Iliada. The Iliad. Uh huh. And the Odyssey. Yeah, I think I, I only read the Iliada. Mm -hmm. And um, then it's a. Uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez and Love and Cholera on Love, Times and Cholera, something like that. Love in the Times of Cholera, right? Yeah, I think some of the ones that I remember, I know. And um, is there any other uh, messages you want to share about Latinx immigrants of Iowa or what people can do to support your work? Um, not because it says um, immigrant, it doesn't mean that we're not going to help someone that is not, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I think everyone is immigrant in this country. So if someone, um, we don't care about the ethnicity, if, they, if we can help them, we're gonna do it, you know? Because um, it says Latin is immigrant, but reality, everyone is immigrant in this country. You know? And that's what I can say. <laughs> and of course they can go to our website, you know, Latinx immigrants of Iowa org and make a donation for some of our programs. Remember that everything is free. <laughs> Every, everything that we do is no cost. Okay, well, thank you so much for being here with us today. And I hope that everyone in the audience enjoyed hearing your Spark Story. To learn more about the Spark Story series, you can check out our website and make sure to tune in next month for another episode of Spark Stories. Thank, thank you. you thank you.